tayo sa diwa ng manalangin at pagsamba. Tas natin ang ating dalawang kamay. Ang ating Panginoon, nanda na ating pagsugo, magpapasalamat sa kanyang kabutihan at katapatan sa atin. Diyos sabang makapangyarihan sa lahat, Maraming salamat po sa araw na ito na kami tinipon niyo upang sambahin ka, puriin ka sa Espiritu at Katotohanan. Sabi ng salita ng Diyos, God is Spirit and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, thank you for your mighty anointing presence in this place. That as we come to worship you, Lord, I pray that your truth, the Word of God, will minister to us. Lord, use your servant to share your Word today. I pray for strength, for wisdom, for anointing. I pray for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Lord, touch everyone, minister to each one of us. You know our conditions. You know our need. You know, Lord, our problems. Lord, as your word is preached today, I pray that you will encourage them, empower them, and continue to, to increase their faith. Lord, lalabas kami sa lugar na ito, knowing na kami ay tunay na kinatagpo mo at tunay na pinagpala mo. Binubuksan namin ang aming puso't isipan sa iyo. Pangunahan niyo kami, maghari ka, manguna ka. At sa pangalan ni Jesus, sinisira, winawasak at pinapawalang bisa namin anumang plano ng kaaway laban sa amin at sa lugar na ito. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil ang banal na spirito ay malayang kumikilos, nangungulat, nangungusap sa bawat isa. Salamat, Lord. Sa iyong salita, gamitin niyo nga pong tungtungan ng, inyong, ng payan ng inyong lingkod upang ang inyong salita ay may hayag ng may kaliwanagan, may pag-asa, may kaligtasan, may buhay, at mayroong buhay na pag-asa na nagmumula sa iyo. Salamat, Panginoon. Ito ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. At ang lahat ay magsabi na, Amen at Amen. Palakpangan natin ang ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, I praise God na nandito ka. Okay? Thank the person. I thank God that you're here. Hallelujah. Well, please be seated. Tayo po ay magsiupa na. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, Comprise family. Well, I'm blessed to see you all. It's good to see everyone. I thank God again for this privilege to share the Word of God. Okay? And I am so blessed to see all of you. I pray that the Lord will speak to us in a mighty way. Well, our theme for this year is called Enlarging Our Territories. Now, by faith, we are claiming His promises, God's Word, as we expand and advance His territory personally and corporately as a church. Our theme verse, Isaiah 54, 2, says there, Enlarge the place of your tent, strength, uh, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stake. Amen. So receive the word of the Lord. That is, yan po ang ating lalakaran sa taong ito. As a church, with your family, and individually. In the past weeks, we have been hearing messages about seeing our future with faith, not fear. Okay? So as 
we enter 2024, the Word of God for us. He has given us this word, seeing your future with faith, not fear. In fact, last Sunday, uh, uh, one of those messages is we learned from Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. And the Word of God says for us, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen? So do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Okay? Face your future with faith, not fear. Last Sunday, we ended our series from this classic verse in Joshua 24, verse 15. We talk about Joshua 24, 15. It says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Ito po yung sinabi ni Joshua nung sila ay nakasettle na sa promised land and he is near death, okay? And, uh, he encouraged the people, choose you this day whom you will serve. Okay? Our God, our good and faithful God, or the God of the Amorites. Okay? And he said, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And we learn about the three characteristics of agape love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 as it applies to our marriage and family. That through these characteristics, we can learn how to love each other deeply as a family and we can learn how to serve God faithfully. Amen? So this is God's word for us. You know, last Sunday, the challenge given to us, especially to the head of the family, to the husbands, men who are here, was how we can serve God faithfully like Joshua and how to pass on that legacy of serving God to our children and to the next generation. Okay? So, so here is Joshua declaring he is old and near death. And he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hindi pa rin nagbabago ang kanyang faithfulness. So we're challenged with this on how we can pass on that legacy. We must train the next generation for Jesus Christ. But honestly, you know, I, I praise God that in this church, the next generation okay, of this church has caught the vision and are now faithfully serving the Lord. I'm referring to our youth ignition, the young adults. If you can see them on the pictures, you know, like uh, here, we can see our children, you know, leading worship. Some of them are, you know, uh, in the worship ministry. Some of them are teaching. Some of them are uh, preaching. You see, you know, this, uh, this group who also took time to preach the word of God. So, yan sila, Raynon, sila, E.G., sila, Ep, Nika, you know, uh, sila, uh, Eliza. Eliza, I saw Eliza here. And you know, you know, they're part of the original, the children's church of, you know, non church state of. Praise God, Sabuay Nila. They've caught the vision and they're in the ministry. Okay? Now, can't you see also that now the third generation are also catching up and beginning to learn to worship and serve God? Okay? So, look at these children, these cute children. Look at uh, Elliot, Benito, River. Okay, so the apostles are now taking over, and uh, don't you know that simultaneous our worship, our children of about 30, 40, or even more than 50 sometimes, on Sunday morning and afternoon, they are there on the third floor worshiping the Lord. You know, praise God for our volunteer teachers, you know. So, hallelujah. Yes, young couples, listen, expose and bring your your children to the church. Start teaching them, okay, to worship God. You know, kahit bata pa yan, kahit sabi mo, maingay, malikot, 
uh, well, just bring them to church. Okay? We are a family here. We can understand this, the nature of his children. Kasi later, pag malaki na yung mga yan, baka di na nila alam yung children, ay yung, yung children's church. Okay, yung church, ano? Eh, iba na pupunta niya. Baka mga, uh, mga beer house na pupunta niya. O di kaya sa mga computer shop. Alright? Why? We were not able to pass on the legacy of, of, of teaching them to truly love God, to honor God, and to serve God. Sabi nga ng salita ng Diyos, Train up a child in a way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Parents, remember, children are a heritage from the Lord. Okay? They are a gift from God, a reward from Him. You know, that's why ang mga batang ito ay pinagkatiwala lang sila sa atin ng Diyos. So introduce them to the one who truly created them and gave them life and who gave them gifts. Sila pinagkatiwala sa atin and offer them back to the Lord. Sabi na Psalms chapter 8 verse 2, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. You see, the praises of the children of infants from their lips, okay, those are God's instruments, a stronghold against our enemies. Kaya, they are also learning how to worship the Lord. Okay? So they are, they are a reward from God. We prayed for them and God gave them to us as a gift. Okay? Introduce them to God. Bring them to church. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Bring them closer to Jesus. And you know, and in this church, we welcome children. We do everything to strengthen our children's church. We have trained volunteer teachers, workers, trust them, and you too can volunteer if you want, by the way. Okay? So you can serve God also through the children's church. Today, let's start a new series about serving God. Okay? Let's start a new series about servanthood. You know, this month we will... Uh, we will be meditating and focusing on the life, ministry, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate Holy Week, the end of March. Okay? So, you know, in his ministry, in Jesus' ministry, we see Jesus in the scripture always serving, doing miracles, meeting people's needs, feeding people, teaching people. Yes, we always see him serving the people everywhere, especially before his arrest. At one time, he demonstrated how it is to be a servant by washing his disciples' feet. Wow. Okay? You know, oftentimes we heard people uh, saying this. He said, I think I have so much in life. I have a good job. I have a good family, a nice house. I've got talented kids. I'm joining a cell group. Nagsisimba din naman ako, okay naman. Yet, pero parang, parang may kulang. I am, I am not yet fulfilled. Parang may kulang. Church, can you relate to that? Natanong mo na ba sa sarili mo yan? Na parang, okay naman ang buhay, nakakaraos din naman, ng pamilya, nakakasurvive naman sinas katapusan pero parang di pa rin ako fulfilled ano kaya ang kulang church you know what after many years I discovered that you and I are made for so much more okay friends you were made more than just living for yourself amen God did not create you to be self-centered or just to survive every man you, God did not create you just to go to work every day and receive your salary, spend for your family, and, you know, and, uh, and the routine goes on and on, and that's it. Listen, you are made by God and for God. Listen, let me repeat again. You are made by God and for God. What does that mean? Meaning that unless your life is focused on serving God, you will never find fulfillment in life. Oh, yes, okay? One can brag about his achievements. One can brag about 
uh, his savings, how much he established, okay? But without God, if you are not connected to God, if you don't know anything okay, for God and to God and for others, you will never be fulfilled. Okay? So today the title of our message is Serving God by Serving Others. Believe it or not, serving brings fulfillment. Yes, I can't explain it. It's a mystery that I'm trying to understand. But yes, there is something in serving that brings fulfillment in life. Let's admit it, that we all grow up wanting to be served. Right? Alam nyo, yung bata pa ako, maliit na rin talaga ako compared sa aking mga barkada. Oh, kahit anong kaya ko ng star magre, hindi na rin ako tumanggad. Pero honestly, okay, ako ang siga sa barkada ko. They, okay, uh, deserve me, okay? Siguro dahil palagi ko silang binibigyan ng candy. Yung mga gano'n, ano? So I'm the leader. Even when I was in high school, in college, I, uh, I, I am as an officer in our CAT, in our ROTC, and sometimes an officer of our class. Kaya gusto ko sumusunod sila. Okay? We don't want to be utusan or servant kasi, you see, parang ang baba ng tingin natin sa mga nagsiserve. Parang lang naman. Di ba ba? And yet, aminin natin, truth is, when we begin to serve others, the true joy and fulfillment in life begin to manifest in our hearts. There is something in serving, okay, that makes you fulfilled. Right? So, you begin to, to serve Meron kang kakaibang feeling na fulfillment at joy pag ikaw ay nagsiserve. Don't you realize why elders are serving the Lord's Supper whenever we have Lord's Supper Sunday? Okay? Why? Because it is a gesture of them. You know, they are serving. They are here to serve. Though they are in the leadership, they are servant. They, they, we call them the servant leadership. You see, that's why, you see, our elders are going around to serve you. You first, okay, I am the Lord's servant. Now, let me share to you three keys that will bring about these truths of serving God by serving others. Amen? Are you ready? So, I don't know. I have prepared three points, but I don't know if I can finish it or not. All right? I've been talking for the last four hours already. Okay? Worship one, and I have MRT 101. For two hours, and now is the fourth, uh, uh, fourth hour. Okay? Now, number one, God designed us to serve. Alright? Truth number one, God designed us to serve. Let me share to you a story about a barber in the U.S. Okay? A barber, you know? One day, a baker went to this barber for a haircut. Okay, pagkatapos na gubitan, the barber asked, the, bar, the, the, ba, uh, the baker asked the barber, how much? And the barber said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't take your money because I'm doing a community service this week and it's free for you. Wow, free. Mahal yata ang kwan ng gupit. You know? e yung barbero ko, 315 gupit ko eh. No? Okay ba? Hindi naman tabi-tabing eh, di ba? Okay. okay. So, so, in a, so, in other words, uh, so he said, I cannot take your money because I'm doing community service for free this week. So the baker was happy. And the following day, guess what? Guess what? The barber was surprised to receive a thank you note with a dozen of donuts from the baker. Ah, okay. So kaya, wow, okay pala gumawa. And so sabi ng baker, oh, I can do the same too. I can do acts of kindness. Then the following day, a farmer came for a haircut. So the same, okay, the farmer asked how much. So again, the barber said, no, it's for free. This week I'm doing a community service for free. So I mean, free, wow. So the farmer was so thrilled and went home happy. And the following day, guess what? The barber surprised to receive a thank you note and a dozen of eggs. All right? Nice, right? Then the following day, because this is in the U.S., a Filipino, a Pinoy, came for a haircut. Okay? 
So that's Kuya Mel. And, uh, okay? So, a Pinoy. So again, after the haircut, so the, the Pinoy asked, oh, how much, my friend? I said, oh, no, 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 Samia, I'm doing a community service this week, and it's for free, for you. Free? Wow! So again, this Pinoy was so thrilled and went home happy. And guess what? The following day, guess what? What happened? What did the barber found out at the door of his shop? There are 12 Pinoys waiting to have their hair cut. <laughs> Iba ang Pinoy, di ba ba? Okay. And then said, oh, our friends are, said our, it's free. Well, truth number one, God designed us to serve. Okay. You know, people design things for many reasons. Okay, but everything has a primary purpose. Example, the chairs that you are sitting on, what's the purpose to sit on, right? Otherwise, mga ngalay kayo, pag wala yan eh. Okay, to sit on. Okay, this mic is to amplify my voice so you can hear me there at the back. Okay, the table is yours for this, uh, for this uh, uh, Lord's Supper elements. And if I sit on the table, baka mag yung table. Okay? That's not the purpose. There is a specific design and purpose for everything man or God created. But listen to this. You and I are created by God to honor and serve Him. You are specifically designed not to just have a career, not just to raise a family, not just to eat, sleep, drink, and be happy. Okay? Church, there's nothing wrong with that. But that is, if that is how, you know, your routine goes, there, you see, you are missing something. Why? Because God designed us to be blessed and to be a blessing. Amen? You are not just a taker, but also to be a giver. And also God designed us to serve Him and others. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, is our verse for that. It says here, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Listen, we, Christians, are God's workmanship, or handiwork in this translation. Created in Christ to do good works or service. In Tagalog, binigyan tayo ng bagong buhay kay Kristo, para tayo ay gumawa ng babuti na inihanda na ng Diyos noon pa man simula. Let's look at the context of verse 10. Okay? If you want to understand the verse, try to go, you know, the verses before so you can get the text. Alright? So go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Wow. Church, how are we saved? We've talked then about MRT 101. We're saved by? By grace. Unmerited favor. You don't deserve it. Okay? It is the gift of God for you. You cannot afford to pay for it. You cannot afford to work for it because it is Free. It is a gift from God. Salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, have you prayed that prayer of acceptance? Okay. Have you put your faith in Jesus, in the finished work of Jesus? If yes, then you are now a child of God. Amen? If it is not yet, then this is your moment for you to receive Jesus Christ. Right, as your Lord and Savior, just say, right now, Lord Jesus, I put my trust in you. I put my faith in you. I believe. Okay? You died on the cross for my sin. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen? Forgive me of my sins. Now, Jesus, come into my heart. By faith, you're now saved. Now, so, now that we are connected and reconciled with God through Jesus, now we become His workmanship. That is the context of verse 10. Okay? So, verse 8 and 9 is telling us about our salvation by grace. Amen? 
The Bible said that this is not the result of your work so that no one can boast about it. Amen. So what is the role of good works here? Because in verse 10, there is good work. Now, listen. You are saved not because of your good works. God saved you, okay, to do good works. Amen, gents? So listen. By faith, you are saved. So now that we are connected and reconciled with God through Jesus, now we become His workmanship. So we need to get involved in doing good works for the glory of God. God saved us to do good works which he prepared in advance for us to do. Amen? Again, we do good works not to be saved because we are already saved by grace through faith. Amen? Good works are not the means to salvation. Rather, they are the evidence of your salvation in Christ Jesus. Can I hear amen? Okay? You know, some, some said, it's too basic, Pastor Doms, you know, because I thought that in our MRT 101. no. It's not basic. It's foundational. I don't want you to, you know, going to church Sunday after Sunday, and then later you end up going to hell because you are not sure of your salvation. If you hear me keep preaching and preaching about that, because I don't want any of these other members of the church miss the point that you are saved by grace through faith, not by your good works. You do good works, you do offering, you do ministry works because that is an evidence that you are now a child of God and that is what God prepared for you in advance from the very beginning. Amen? Now you have assurance of salvation. Your assurance of salvation is not based on how much you have done, how much you have worked, but how much okay, faith you have in Jesus Christ. Amen, church? So that's the, the, the context of verse 10 is telling you right now, now that you are a Christian, you are God's workmanship. Now that you are saved, you are God's handiwork. Now that you are saved by faith, by grace through faith in Jesus, now serve. Okay? Now the work is not you know, for you to be saved, but that good works is the evidence that you are already saved. Amen. So today as believers, I challenge you to serve God by serving others. Remember, God designed you and has given you talent and gift to serve others. Again, hindi ka lang nilika ng Diyos para gumawa at magtrabaho para sa sarili mo, kundi para din sa assignment at gawain na binigay ng Diyos sa inyo. Amen? God called you to serve Him. He wants you to fulfill your specific assignment. So church, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't stop. Give your best. Be passionate and be faithful in service. It will bring fulfillment and joy in your life. Amen? Ang problema, marami na rin ngayon, mga couch potato Christian. You know what's a couch potato? Okay? So they are Christians, yet they know, they know that from the Bible, they are nice people, but they are not involved with the ministry. Okay? Not in the game. Pupo na lang. Self-centered. The only work, they only work for themselves. Amen? Kahit nga sa tight, mabariya-bariya na lang. You know? They take pride in their personal achievements. They enjoy life. Happy, happy na lang. To them, di naman pala kailangan ng good works para masay. Ba't ko papahirapan ang sarili ko? Hello? Okay? Yes, it's true. Okay? Good works is not necessary for you to be saved. Faith is. Amen? But to prove that you are saved, it takes good work. Hello? Tell me now, okay? Do we need to do good works now that we are a Christian? Oh, well, we are saved anyway. What's the point of good works? Amen? Diba? Of course, yes. Because, you know, sa sabihin sa, akala ko ba Christian yun? Bakit ganun yun? Pa, pasuray-suray pa rin sa daan. Lasing yata. Diba? Diba ko question kan? Eh, hindi, hindi, hindi ko niyan eh. Hindi ko niyan na yun sa dyan. Ay, dikon pala yun. Kaya pala gano'n maglakad ng dikon, no? So, mga question. So, people begin to doubt. Church, you want to be healed of your depression? In the name of Jesus, go out and start serving. Okay? Yeah. Many people now are depressed. Okay? They are under stress. Alam mo, ang kulang dyan, mag-serve ka. Oh, yes. 
share to others? Do you want to be happy? Go out and do good to others. Do you want to have that sense of fulfillment? Be kind and do good to others. Do you want to be fruitful and, jo- and, and, fruitful and, uh, and joyful in your life? Be generous. Okay, go out and share your blessing. The, se- the secrets of a fulfilled life is service. It's when you learn how to serve, when you learn how to share. Many Christians are like this in this verse. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 57. They always quote this verse. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. And they begin to shout, Hallelujah. We are victorious. We are victorious. We are victorious in Christ. Yes. Okay? You are victorious. You know the context of this verse. Okay, you know the context of this, why thanks be to God, the context of this verse is Christ's resurrection. Amen. Now, if you want to get the, the meaning, more meaning of this, okay, is in verse, is in the next page, in the next verse. Verse 58, you read verse 58. Okay, in verse 58, it like similar to that, therefore, sabi natin, kapag may therefore, tingnan mo yung verse before. And verse before, thanks be to God, He gives us victory. Now, therefore, okay, because of Jesus' victory on the cross, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you, always give yourselves fully to the what? Come on, church, to the what? To the work of? Because you know that your labor is not in vain. Yun pala ang conclusion on. Tayo, hallelujah, tayo ng hallelujah. Okay, okay. Ang galing mo, praise God. Okay, and then you begin to, you know, to, share, to claim, yes, there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, you know that you are victorious in Christ. But, okay, kaya nga, dinugtong ni Paul, therefore, brothers, sisters, church, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always, always, give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Kaya, I see a lot of people, you know, Christians, they claim, always say, we are victorious, you know, but they're not involved, they're not in the game, okay? Know this, ang galing ni Paul, sabi niya nga, pull it to the work of the Lord, because your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Again, the context, if you always quote verse 57, is that it's Christ's resurrection, and the purpose of Christ's resurrection must manifest in your life, okay, through your daily works, through the work of the ministry, and through the labor that you're doing for the glory of God. Amen, church? So those are what Christians are supposed to be. The victory is ours. We are victorious. And let's prove it in the work that we are doing. Kadalasa, naiiwan kasi yung verse 58. 57 na lang. That's the key verse here, 58. That's why, sabi don, therefore, okay, thank God for the victory. Therefore, serve, work, okay, labor in the Lord. That's the key verse. That's the purpose of Christ's victory on the cross. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. This is a verse for God's workmanship. Sa mga masisipig ni Christians, ito ang verse. You know, Church service and ministry are not about programs. It is about people. Yeah. In the church, we have programs and events. The, ad- the agenda is people. Harvest events, people. Okay? To save the lost. Okay? And I said, the people, agenda is people. Okay? When we start the ministry, the first thing that we need and to pray for is the person or people. To be in that ministry. Amen? We don't open any ministry without the person, without the vision okay, bearer. Amen? So verse 8 is not a verse for couch potato Christians. Doing nothing. Alam niyo, pagiging tamad, nakakahawa din yan. Okay? Yung pagiging walang ministry, no cell group, no devotion, you, in da- you are in danger of moral and spiritual decline. Lukewarmness, apathy, complacent, and missing out on God's blessings. Yes. Oh. Marami rin nami miss. Okay? That's why Jesus said, I am coming soon and my reward is with me and I will give to each one according to what he has done. They have done. Amen? Friends, listen. If there's anything I want you to take home today, 
Know this, that God designed you to serve Him by serving others. Think about that. Maybe you say, oh, Pastor Doms, yeah, I love God. I have a relationship with God. I love to worship and honor God. But saying to serve others, okay, uh, that's, the, that's a problem now. Ulang pa time ko sa sarili ko eh. That's why you're not fulfilled. Okay? You always have things your way. No fulfillment. Sometimes, you know, someone said, we can serve without loving God, but you cannot love without serving others. We cannot love God without serving others. I've been the pastor of this church for the last 26 years. And, uh, and I am so blessed to be surrounded by good, wonderful people in the church. Okay? I mean, I'm, I'm referring to our elders here. Okay? I am so blessed. Okay? Uh, I, I, I see Brother Freddy and Sister Arlene here. Wonderful couple. They're part of this church from the very beginning. In fact, si Brother Freddy talaga ang unang kaming magkakilala. Okay, kung bakit ako napunta din dito. Okay. So, that's history. But I praise God for, also for the Pinars, for the Vidad, for the Rocos, for the Grabadors. Come on, let's give you a clap offering for them. No, thank you. Okay that the Gilmos and all others, and including you, I've never mentioned, but thank you for you, okay? Because you are too really, uh, you are full of wisdom, understanding, you're too gifted, okay? That I'm so blessed to have worked with. And I call that a privilege and an opportunity. And I thank God for that. Number two truths that I'd like to share to you this afternoon is that God gifted us to serve. God designed us to serve. God gifted us to serve. You see, God did not save us empty-handed. When God saved us, He gave us something so He can use you. Amen? Okay? Are you with me, church? Okay? God did not save you and said after that, what now? No. He has a purpose for you. Why he saved you. That's why he gave you gifts. Okay? First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Listen. We receive special gift for what? For pleasures of life? Is it? No? Is it for living a comfortable, carefree life? No? We receive gift, okay, in serving one another or for us to serve others as faithful stewards. Church, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, na born again tayo. Again? So, no na born again tayo, kasama sa binigay sa atin, ay ang kaloob niya, ang regalo niya. Because the Holy Spirit, okay, dwells inside of us. So, He's given us the fruit of the Spirit, okay, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift is not for us, it's not for you. Listen, not to brag, okay, not for you to Take pride that you have that, not for our pleasure, not for you, you to keep it, not to brag about it. Your spiritual gifts are meant to be shared to others. Hello? Are you with me, church? Okay? Use it to serve God, to edify believers, to encourage the church, to bless others and glorify God. Again, your gift is not for you. It is to bless and serve others. Okay, the gift God has given to me, okay, the gift of a pastor, when God called me to serve as a pastor, okay, I did not just keep it for my own. I did not just keep it for few people, okay. I went out and said, I, you know, I want to serve God as a pastor. That's why you're here and I'm privileged to pastor you, okay. Not only that, including our 10 other daughter churches, okay, that, uh, that we, we started from different places. 
So, listen people of God. Again, your gift is not for you. It is to bless others. Kaya, ang tawag sa atin, we are blessed to be a blessing. Alam niyo, all of us, or every believer, has at least a gift. You know? Wala pong magsabi, wala akong gift. Wala magsabi na, konti lang gift ko. Hindi naman talaga ako ganun kagaling. You know? So, no, listen church. You have at least a gift. And use that gift. Okay? Because if God can trust you with a few, God will put you in charge of many. Amen, church? That's a biblical principle. Amen? If he can be trusted with a few things, then God will entrust to you great things. Amen, church? So while, you know, while each one of us has at least a gift, there are people who are multi-gifted. Amen? I'll praise God for our, for our young people here. You know, I saw Alex uh, uh, Arboleda. He can dance, he can sing, he can teach, he can, he can play the piano. Yana, you know, Kirstine. He, tamo, nag-dance naman siya kanina, kinang umaga, doon siya sa Turing Church. And then he danced. And then now he is uh, there at the tech team. Andiyan ba siya? Okay? So look at this little raven. They can dance and play, you know? So, raven, mag-dance ka nga. Yung mga ganun. Mali yata. Wrong number pala. No? Oh, praise God! Because there are people who are multi-gifted in this play. You know, Brother Red is a multi-gifted person. You know? Kahit anong instrument, pahawak mo dito pa play niya. Oh. And he's a good facilitator, by the way. Uh, kaya, you know, uh, so lahat yan, and I'm so blessed that they can, you know, Sister Ludi, and uh, the Gravadors here, hindi lang sila multi-gifted, ang gagwapo at ang gaganda pa ng pamilang ito. Pamila. Glory to God. I thank God for, alam niyo, the mission team of the Gravadors. Uh, wala nga kanina daw kay talk about missions uh, kanina ng MRT natin pero marami na nagbo-volunteer kaya uh, uh, ano no what we were saying here church multi-gifted okay the lord has blessed us with an assistant pastor pastor alex is a, alex can do what i cannot do oh yeah okay he can preach he can teach he can write he can do all those in the mass media there the cameras and all everything, the editing and all the PowerPoint here, okay? He does that for me. Glory to God. Listen, church. Ako gifted then. Really. Uh, ito gift. Ito rin gift. Ito gift. Ito, ito gift yan. Huwag kang maingit ha. Okay. Gift lahat yan, okay? Gift to the ho. Pati Rilo, okay? O oh, Earl Grabador. Okay, uh, grabe. Uh, para uminto na, Dr. Earl. Para, uh, para, uh, okay, give. Pero, okay, don't get me wrong. Yung panloob akin na yon. para pagka nagkabawian, may dangal pa rin akong uuwi sa amin. Okay? The Magbanwas are very generous people. Thank you for your brother, Fred. Amen. Baka gusto mong palitan ulit yung kotse ko. Nagapahira. <laughs> Two of their cars na pasa sa akin. Praise God. Thank you for you, brother. And so we are happy for all of you. Do you know people are gifted and blessed with many gifts? I am so thankful. Amen for them. Oh, I am I am so blessed with... Uh, the family here, Al and Rodney here, and uh, these are mission supporters that they are generous with. Can we give cup offering for them? Thank you. Again. Hallelujah. Yeah, there are many people here. They are silent supporters. They give gifts, okay, so we can go on missions. They cannot go. Uh -huh. So, lalo si Brother Freddy, ayun ang lumipad ng aeroplano to, eh. at saka si Brother Peps. Nagsawa na itong mga pilotong ito. Kaya kayo na lang pumunta doon. Okay, ito check eh. Yun ang maganda. 
Di ba ba? <laughs> Praise God! Hallelujah! Spiritual gifts? What is spiritual gifts? It is God-empowered abilities that cannot be earned or chosen, given only to believers as God's will for the purpose of serving, blessing the community of believers and others as instrument of God for the purpose of glorifying God. Your gift, okay, is given to you at your new, at new birth, at our new birth, upon commitment, given, empowered directly by God. Spiritual gifts are different from natural ability, artistic ability, athletic ability, and talents. Talents are from God, but given at our birth. Okay? Yung spiritual gifts, nung panaborn again ka. Okay? So talents are given at our birth and inherited from our parents and learned and developed. Okay? Sabi ng 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot, under, cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Okay? Yes. So, when the person is born again, is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and he can discern spiritual things, because he has the Holy Spirit. The communication center is your spirit and the Holy Spirit. You can understand the Word of God. You can discern okay, about things from the Lord and from the enemy because you have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Some examples of spiritual gifts are Godly wisdom, faith, prayer, discernment, exhortation, teaching, preaching, service, administration, mercy, giving, healing, hospitality, and encouragement. These are just initial list of spiritual gifts that, can, that we can share and, and, uh, and serve God with. You have at least one of these, and we encourage you to use it. We need each other. Amen? You see, in case you need to study more about spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4. You know, we'll talk more about this in our MRT 301. I explained that a while ago. Okay? In Ephesians chapter 4, 16, it says here, From him the whole body, the church, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The whole body which is the church, joint, support, grows, builds in love as each part does its work. Listen, church. Because the church is composed of many believers with many gifts, imagine if each one of us used our gifts and talents. This church will be dynamic, vibrant, and this church will continue to grow and expand. That is why this year is our year of expanding our territories. Amen? The church is alive, enthusiastic, active, and keeps growing and growing because everyone is working. The body is healthy. Na, na kahit, you know, lahat yan ay ginagamit ni Lord. Alam niyo, lahat ay may gift. Kaya walang maliit na gift. Walang, sec walang secondary, no. Walang Christian na walang contribute at masabi, wala ako may bibigay. We are all God's instrument for His glory. God gifted you to serve Him and others. That's why if you consider yourself to be part of the church, okay, we encourage you to take part, okay, to serve God. You are welcome in the church, okay. No person or Christian is a lone ranger Christian. No, don't be a lone ranger Christian. Okay, be faithful in serving God until Christ returns. You are welcome to serve in the any, in any ministry of the church. To use your gift, you're an important part of this body. And how to serve? How to serve and use your spiritual gifts? Join, okay, and volunteer in those different ministries. We have music ministry. We have answers. We have marshals, tech team, media. Kids, missions, cleaning, you know, feeding. You know, you can even volunteer in our office. So, you know, uh, encoder, volunteer your service. If there's a new ministry that you want us to start, let me know. Okay? We will start. We will help you. Exercise your gift and let me know how we can help you. Amen, church? You should enjoy serving God and others through the gift. It should be a delight. When you use and serve God, 
It should be a delight, not a burden. Okay? Dapat nag enjoy ka, hindi pabigat. Amen? Hindi ka nababurn out, hindi ka, okay, na uh, natatakot. It is always a privilege to serve God. Amen? It is always a privilege. That's why I always say, hey, what a privilege to share the Word of God. Okay? What a privilege to pastor you. What a privilege to serve the Lord. Even in our cell group, exercise your gift, edify each other. Amen, church? Because the Lord has so much for you. Listen, church. I have actually three points, but I'll stop here. 